Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community. I'm Trigger, and today we're going to go over everything you need to know about the 1987 Buick Grand National. I'm going to do engine tests, we're going to do a drift build, a drag build, and a dirt build, and then of course a track build for this car, just like I would in a wrong build video. However, we're going to change the format up. I think that those videos are great, but they were getting a little bit stale for my taste, and I wanted to switch things up and do it a little bit differently. So. Do me a favor and let me know how you like the format of this video in the comments down below. All right, let's get to testing. Let's go. I'm giving away an Xbox Series X to one of my subs this holiday season. Click the giveaway video link in the description or in the top right of this video now to watch the video and enter the giveaway. Just being a sub will not automatically put you in the giveaway, you must officially enter. So go watch that video, enter, and then come back to this one. Good luck. All right, the first thing that I do when I'm going to test a car is try to figure out which engine is going to be the fastest. And that requires me to build every single engine that is available for the car. If the engine fully built doesn't get to 400, then I just don't even test that engine because an engine that is above 400 plus on the overall rating is going to be faster than one that is not. So if it's not 400 plus, we skip it and move on. So let's start building these engines and we will start testing it the second we find one that's a 400 plus. All of the parts that you would put on the engine are the same for every car when you're talking about testing the engines. I always use Ultimate Plus parts for everything and then I go with the Ultimate Dual Turbo, which is the fastest option in the game. And then I go with of course, the 5x3 pound NOS, it allows more flexibility. As far as the rest of the parts go, to be honest, when you're testing an engine, the parts are not that important because what you want is to have the same parts on every single engine so that in between tests, the only thing you're changing is the engine and therefore you can tell the difference between the engine. If you start changing around parts like gearboxes or differentials in between engine tests, all of a sudden you're throwing in another variable that doesn't allow you to actually test the engine itself. So for this setup, we're going to be having the track suspension, the elite brakes, the race tires, elite plus clutch, super plus six speed gearbox, and then the super track differential. I'm going to run refill or sorry, repair kits because I just don't like my car looking all messed up and we're not going to be running refills. Uh, on these races because that's again another variable that is hard to control when we're testing so we're gonna be doing this with uh, the standard NOS duration bottle and that's it so let's take a look at the stats on this car obviously fully built we're looking at 374 this is not an engine that I'm gonna go with let's go ahead and try to find one that is a good engine all right so this 1200 horsepower version of the 6.2 liter V8 was the first engine in the parts shop to make this car 400 plus. Let's take a look at the stats. You've got 2.43 on 0 to 60, 1,038 max torque, and 235 top speed with uh, 1,200 horsepower current. Now you could get that horsepower up to 1,239, but you'd have to swap to the single turbo, and that single turbo is not gonna give you the low end boost that you need, so stay with the dual turbo when it comes to building this car. Even though it gives you a little less horsepower, it really is, in the end, a better option for racing. All right, so let's take this car out. We'll go out to Arion and we'll make a pass. Hopefully we can make a clean one and then we will move on to the next engine. Oh man, already I can tell this car does not have a sharp turning radius, which is gonna really put it at a disadvantage when it comes to track racing. I really, I don't know what my expectation is on this. We'll see how it goes. I might have to lower the downforce so that the, uh, so that the rear end slides out a little bit more. We'll see though, let's see what happens. Oh man, it has a really hard time starting out. Usually with three NOSes, you can get into second place easily. And the rear end doesn't want to slide out. So you're taking that corner at 120 miles an hour. It's really, that's really slow for this race. But here it goes though. Look at this acceleration, not bad. 220 when we pass that telephone pole. That's not bad at all. Oh my God, I really have to slam on the brakes to get that car to turn. This is not super good. It does okay on these turns, but yeah, it's okay. It still doesn't slide out exactly like I want it to. This feels like not a very good time. This feels like a, a above three minute time on this course. 
even after tuning and even after engine replacements, I don't know if this car is going to be fast. This is kind of disappointing, to be honest with you. I thought this car was going to be really good. Yeah, look at this. We're already over three minutes. Wow, this is just not good. That was like a 306. All right, 306 with a clean run. That's not good at all. I actually anticipated this engine to be one of the better ones for the car. It's probably one of the top three just based on the stats, but oh man, this is this is kind of painful, honestly. I, I thought the car would be better. Let's head back to the garage and uh, I don't know, let's, let's try the next one. All right, so here's the 5.2 liter V12. It's the next engine in the line. We got 2.430060, 953 max torque, which is quite a bit less than the previous engine, 234 less top speed. It's the same horsepower and the same potential horsepower. Uh, again, because we're running the dual turbo, we're not at the full max potential. Now in general, the V8 engines are faster than the V12s in this game, and that doesn't go for every single V12. I'm sure there's one out there that performs better in one of these cars, but for the most part, the V12 engines are a lot heavier and they don't give you more potential or more current horsepower and enough torque to make it work. So most of the time, the V8 engine outperforms and then second in line would be the V10s and then the V12s come after that. So I don't think this engine is going to do very, very well, but let's take it out to Arian and see what happens. Yikes, this feels worse. Just off the start, this feels worse. All right, here we are coming in for the final 500 yards, and it's going to be slower than that V8. Yeah, slower than the V8 for sure. That's like I expected, though. The V12s are, are a little bit slower. All right, back in the garage. The next engine up is the 8.4 liter V10. Now, this engine has a very good shot at being the fastest engine for the car. I think it's between this one, the 3.9 liter V8, and then the V8 we tested first. I think it's between those three, but... Let's go ahead and run this through Arian and see what happens. Come on, man. What are you brake checking right there for? What is this computer doing? All right, here we go. Final straightaway, 500 yards remaining. Looks like we're going to be the fastest time so far. Oh, I think that was a 303. I think that was a 303. Let's see. I think we got a 303. That's actually way faster than the other engines we've tested so far 303.75 nice that's the fastest time so far i had a feeling this engine was going to be the fastest but let's wait and see we've got three more engines to test we'll find out at the end of those tests which engine is going to be the fastest still though to be honest with you this car is so disappointing so far i mean a 303 i feel like it should run faster than that I really do. I feel like it should run faster than a 303, but oh well. Let's go ahead and swap these parts over. All right, this 3.9 has a little bit more kick in the bottom end. Let's see how it does in the top end, where it gets to by the time this telephone wire. Only 218, so I don't know. We'll see. Here we go. Last final 500 yards. <clears throat> I don't think we're going to beat that time. Oh, it was so close. It was so close. It's like a 303 something. Let's see what it is. 30365. It beats it by a tenth of a second. These engines are really, really close on Arian. A tenth of a second could have easily been explained by a driving mistake during those races, even though those were two clean runs. You know, I could have slid or overbraked on one corner when I did on the one engine and didn't do it on the other engine. All right, so we're actually going to have to take this car with those two engines that were almost tied on Arian and take it to a track that has a lot more straights like Sonic or Aardvark to see which engine does better in the top end. Both of these cars, both of these engines, I should say, are very evenly matched on a race that has a lot of turns and tight corners. But on an open track, we have to figure out which engine is a little bit faster. Because they're even on a tight course, we're going to have to make our decision based on what's better on the high end for this car. Now we already went ahead and tested the V12, the very last engine that we haven't tested yet. We ran that. The time was not good. It was in the 308s. So we're going to discard that engine. It's between these two engines, the 8.4 liter V10 and the 3.9 liter V8. So we're going to take those two engines. We're going to head out to Sonic and let's see what happens. All right, first up, we've got the 8.4 liter V10. Let's see how this goes.
We finished it. Oh my goodness. I had to restart that a lot to get that done. 2.46.46. Not a super great time, but expected. The other tests were pretty slow too. Let's go ahead and swap over to that 3.9 liter V8. Oh my god, these times are insanely close. Which one it- It's exactly the same! 246-46, there's no way! Dude, what? <laughs> these engines are so close! They're so closely matched. Oh my gosh, that's insane. Well, I mean the tests prove it. You can use either one of these engines, but my general feeling on this is that the 3.9 liter V8 is quicker out of the turns, but slower to get to top speed. Now you can offset that with NOS, so it might be wise to use the 3.9 liter V8 because you can actually compensate for that lack of top speed. It, it's not even that it has a lack of top speed though, it actually it does well, it just doesn't get to top speed as fast as the 8.4 liter V10, so I really, I really don't know. I think I'm gonna go with the 3.9 liter V8. It sounds better, it feels better in terms of handling, and it does do a better job on tighter, shorter courses. So that's it, that's what we're doing. We're going with the 3.9 liter V8. Now we can set everything else up to be exactly the way we want it. So let's go over the track build. Let's head back to the garage, and I'll show you my final track build for this car. All right, the final track build for this Buick Grand National is going to be the 3.9 liter V8 engine. Although if you want, you could use the V10. You're probably gonna get similar results, but we're going with the 3.9 liter V8. Ultimate plus engine parts with the Ultimate dual turbo, the five by three pound NOS, and track suspension. We're gonna do elite brakes. We're gonna do race tires and elite plus clutch, super plus six speed gearbox, and the track super differential. I'm gonna use repair kits and NOS duration for me, but this is it. This is gonna be the final track build. I did play around with the live tuning settings, so let's go ahead and look at that real quick. Now, I had to decrease the downforce a little bit. This car did not wanna slide out. It, it has a very terrible turning radius, so the back end won't slide like it needs to on certain turns, sharper turns. It takes a long time, so you have to actually turn a little bit early on this I like the steering sensitivity low because that gives me a little bit more control and be, the ability to sort of micromanage my turns. And then traction control always off and drift style is almost always gas. And definitely for this car, I'm gonna use the gas. So you've got a quarter mile of 927 with the track build. Um, this is it, this is the final track build. All right, to set this car up for drag, there's only a few changes that you need to make because the drag build is always very similar to the track build. So I'm gonna start with the track build, and this is definitely the 3.9 liter V8 engine. It has much more torque at a low RPM. So I think that the 3.9 liter V8 is definitely the way to go. Now, I'm gonna use the one by 15 pound NOS tank, and we're gonna swap the tires over to drag tires. This is really, the only real change that you need to make in terms of parts, everything else is gonna stay the same. We're actually gonna check the gearboxes next. I have one of each, so let's take it out and take a look at what the quarter mile time is and if we can improve that by changing the gearbox and the downforce. Okay, notice with the drag tires, you've got a quarter mile of 8.87. So if we take the downforce and drop it all the way down, no changes. But notice if you go up on the downforce, you do lose 300th of a second on the quarter mile. So we're gonna leave the downforce all the way down and let's take a look at the gearboxes. So gearbox number one, this is a six speed. So 887 with a six speed. Let's drop a four speed in there and see where we're at. Still the same, 887. So how about the five speed? This is the last test here. So we got five speed gearbox, and our live tuning, it's still at 887. So I'm gonna go ahead and just for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna keep the six speed gearbox in this car. This is gonna be the fastest drag build you can make for this car is the six speed gearbox. Notice the zero to 60 dropped down to 2.0. Remember it was up at like 2.4, three or four, seven. 
and then 859 still on max torque with 235 top speed and the same potential and current horsepower. So let's take this out. Let's just make one pass over here. But this is it. This is the final drag build. So it's the track build plus the 15 pound NOS bottle, the drag tires, and then the adjusted downforce. It's exactly the same. So let's do this here. Let's line this baby up. It sounds really good. And this car looks amazing. I'm so disappointed that they didn't make this car faster than it is. It really is a, an awesome looking car. I wonder if it's going to pop a wheelie with this setup, if these CPUs wouldn't get out of the way. These AI cars just keep turning. Where are you guys coming from? Get out of the lane. You better do it before that guy comes. Oh, it does pop a wheelie. I have no control. All right, let's run that back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh my god. We're out of control! Jeez. Alright, here we go. Let's try this again. Alright, we're gonna run this one on the emergency lane so we don't have to worry about this AI. There is so much of it. Look at all this traffic. Oh my god, this guy just cuts me off. Oh, with the torque steer. That means we can't hit the NOS right away. There we go. Straighten it out. NOS. Ooh, it feels good though. It's a rocket ship, not gonna lie. I mean, it's not the fastest, but it gets there. Really not bad. I mean, it definitely could be faster. It's definitely not a fa super fast drag car, but this is good. All right, let's build this thing into a drift car. Let's go with, let's go back to the uh, five by three pound NOS tank. We definitely don't need the one by 15. We're gonna change this over to the standard rear wheel drive drift setup that I use for all the rear wheel drive cars. Well, most of them with a couple of exceptions uh, for an automatic transmission. If you're running manual, this might not be the best setup for you, but this is definitely good for automatic. I go speed cross suspension. We leave the drag tires on there and then we go with the pro drift differential. So this is the setup that I'm using for all of my automatic rear wheel drive cars. Let's just see how this performs and then we will make some changes if we need to. Another key to a good drift build is your live tuning. Make sure you have your steering sensitivity on max and your downforce all the way at the lowest. And this is what's gonna give you a lot of slide in the rear and the ability to flip the car from left to right very easily. Oh my goodness. All right, so it doesn't wanna to slide too well, but let's just see, that was probably user error. Wow, okay. Once it starts sliding, it does not want to stop. We're going to try this again. All right. All right, really not bad so far. It keeps the slide going, which is nice. It's kind of hard to transition. You have to use the, the e-brake. It's not very controllable, though. All right, there we go. Not too bad, not too bad. And then I messed up that. This thing scores high though. I mean, I this is a terrible run for me. And I just scored 70,000. I mean, man, it really doesn't want to transition. <sighs> All right, let's, let's try one more build. Oh, this feels way better. Still doesn't transition well, but it's way more controllable. Yeah, that felt really good. 80,000, I'll take it. That was a really good build. So what we did was we took off the drift differential and switched it to a speed cross. So let's see what how it does in this track inside the racetrack. This is a more open, uh, freer drift area. So let's see. Yeah, much more control. Not bad at all. 119. This thing actually drifts pretty well with this build. I like this a lot, actually. This is the build we're going to go with. So let's go over the build real quick. We got the uh, 3.9 liter V8 engine again, Ultimate Plus engine parts, as always, dual turbo, and the 3x5 NOS, which is really not relevant. Then you get the speed cross suspension, 
the drag tires, and the speed cross differential. Usually on a rear wheel drive car, I would go with the drift differential, the pro drift. But in this case, the speed cross really works a lot better for this car. It just makes it a little easier. Now it does have some weaknesses. It does not transition very well. So you're gonna have to tap the handbrake between turns if you really wanna turn it tight. It's the only way to get it to turn and you have to let off the gas when you do that. So those are my suggestions. That's my drift build. Let's move on to the dirt. All right, so for a dirt build, I always end up going with the rally suspension. So let's drop the rally suspension on and then we're gonna change to an off-road tire, which is going to be a super, no, 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 elite. We're gonna do an elite off-road tire. And then the differential is always rally. The, the races in this game really, really cater to a rally type car more so than an off-road type car so let's go with that and uh let's go ahead and drop this baby outside let's go all right and just before we go ahead and try this let's check our live tuning again i'm gonna go with low steering sensitivity and we're gonna go with high downforce we'll see how this works if this reduces our top speed a little too much on the dirt we will swap it back to low downforce, but let's see how it goes. You can always tell if a car is gonna be fast in the dirt, but when you hit NOS and you're going in a straight line, can you get over 140? 140 miles an hour is the determining factor right there because only some cars can get over 140 in the dirt. Others are stuck in the 130s. So let's see what happens with the rest of this race. It feels good so far, but I don't know. We're gonna see what the time looks like. 152.41, that's actually pretty good. According to some of the stats on my off-road cars, that's gonna be somewhere in around 10, which is really not that bad. It's not great, but it's not bad either. It's a decently fast car in the dirt. So let's go and race our rumble race just so we can have that time. It might be faster on a more open course like Rumble, so let's see. All right, we got a 315.38, so that's again really close to number 10. It's kind of in the middle of the pack. It's not a super fast off-road car, but it's also not that slow either. So anyway, guys, I really wish that they did a better job with this car. They made it faster, not a better job. The car's fine, the customizations are fine, but it's just not very fast on the track. It's just okay. It's not that fast in terms of a drag car, and it's not really that fast in the dirt. It's just okay on all fronts. Now, it does do pretty well in drifting after you've got the right build, but that's not really the reason why I want to drive this car, right? This is an iconic race car from the streets, man. This thing is an 87 Grand National, man. It is an amazing car. And look at the car. I mean, it looks great. This is something that I want to drive in this game. And there really is no reason to do so. It's slower than most of the cars that are in the top 10. Actually, it's slower than all of the cars in the top 10, I should say. It's probably slower than most of the cars in the top 20 even though it ranks somewhere in the middle on my list. So, and this is just a disappointment for me. I really think they ruined this car. It really should have been a fast car in this game, but it's not. But what are we gonna do? That's Need for Speed. So thank you so much for everyone that decided to watch this video. And I hope you guys like the new format of my wrong build series. I'm gonna be calling it something different. We're gonna stay away from the wrong build for now. And if you don't like it, we're just gonna go right back to the wrong build. So leave me some comments. Let me know what you think of the new format. I know it's a little bit longer, but hopefully a little bit more entertaining. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to all the malicious subs. I appreciate you guys. And uh, I will catch you on the next one. Figure out. I don't know, I don't know.